Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scheme, where we get to figure out what makes people tick, how they motivate themselves, how they overcome adversity, how they thrive on a daily basis. I'm your co-host, Danny Wright, here with my lovely mother, Kenise Middleton, who's going to introduce our next fabulous guest. Yay, I'm so excited to have Cole Brown here. He is a political commentator and author of Gray Boy, Finding Blackness in the White World. We're so excited to have you. I like and, that oh, I, And I have to mention, former Georgetown alumnus, too, in the house. Yes. <laughs> proudly, Australia proudly. And Australia living yeah. extraordinary. Ooh, yeah, we, yes. Yes. We just, yeah, all kinds of goodness here. So we're excited to have you, Cole. You know, we like to start out by just, you know, asking our guests how they navigate. What's your secret sauce? How do you stay relevant in this very interesting world? And how will you navigate yeah. Uh, well, first, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. As you mentioned, it's good to be with a fellow Georgetown alum. Um, my secret sauce. I, I think that there's probably two things um, that are really important to me. One is is family. That's probably an answer you get a lot. But uh, in some ways, my, I'm incredibly close with both my mother and my sister. Um, as I started to get a little bit of success with the book, uh, they were quick to remind me that I'm not shit. Um, <laughs> and, and I need that uh, <laughs> regularly. Um, so, so, you know, they keep me in check, but also I, I you know, I bounce, I bounce all of my ideas off my mother and, and, um, and, and she's been an in, in incredible sort of support in my life. Uh, and then a second secret sauce, if I can have one, I think is, is a uh, time alone, uh, isolation. Um, I walk a lot, I run, I, it, things, I do things that, um, sort of help me clear my head, but then also, uh, I think particularly as a writer, it's important to have that just to think through ideas. Yep. Man, I would say, I would say with you being a political commentator, an author, obviously we're at a point where you are building your brand to just a whole nother level, right? And I, when I, as I think about, you know, the way I've built the brand and, and some of the things that I've done, you know, I often reflect on my childhood and, and how I got to where I am. I guess, given where you are currently, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, again, I think I have two things. One, um, in the book, uh, you know, I describe in detail some of the more difficult moments uh, uh, in my life, in my childhood. And um, I think in that time when I, when I was in that, in that sort of space mentally, it would have been helpful just to hear that, that, uh, that this is temporary, that, that you know, li life, uh, life goes on after middle school and after high school. Um, I think it's hard, it's easy to lose sight of that uh, when we're so caught up in, in the different phases of our life. Um, and then two, I think that uh, particularly as uh, when you're in sort of the like high school and then college years, um, it's easy to look at life and the future in terms of sort of four, four year or even a couple month increments. Um, I think if you're able to lift up your gaze a bit and look at a slightly longer horizon, um, it's probably helpful with some decision making. So I, I took a job that, you know, after college that I just didn't, I had no business taking um, because I was looking at a, at a limited time horizon. Um, I think if you lift your gaze up and try to look at your life over, over a 10 year horizon, just for the sake of the thought experiment, maybe you make some different decisions. No, that, that totally makes sense. And I'm curious, you know, you've gotten so much success in becoming an author and writing such a such a deeply profound book based on your experiences, what was your plan A? Like, what did you want to be when you grew up? Like, what did you want to yeah. do? Um, that's hard. I think I'm still figuring out the answer to that mm -hmm. question, frankly. Um, I think when I was at Georgetown, uh, for a long time, I just sort of assumed I would go into finance for no reason other than the fact that it seemed like everybody else was doing it. Um, <laughs> and it seemed like, you know, seemed like a good idea for that reason. Um, never mind the fact that like one, I was not interested in it and two, I wasn't good at it. Um, so I, I, I think I pursued that path for a little while. Only recently have I found uh, the courage, I guess, or whatever to, um, to kind of step out on my own path. Uh, now I think my future looks slightly different, hopefully. Hopefully it's, it's more storytelling. Um, hopefully it's a bit more creative endeavors and, and trying to bring, you know, alternative black narratives to, to both the page and the screen. Okay. So it sounds like, it sounds like you're currently in your plan B. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost, it's almost strange to call it plan B because it is so the preferred path. Yeah. Um, yes. But, but it's not the one that I, you know, set out upon yeah. right after college. Yeah. I, I completely, I completely agree with that. And I, I understand it. I understand it. Someone that was passionate about the environment <clears throat> um, and then going into the nonprofit world and now getting yeah. into the venture space, you know, I'm, some people could say I'm on my plan C, but I think there's, there's fluidity right. you know, amongst all. Um, but I think it's super important for, for our, our, our viewers to hear, you know, given where you are um, as a creative and, and, and where you're going, and as this person that is building his own brand and his business and is aspiring mm -hmm. countless, you know, across our country and the world, actually, here in Australia, what is it that you bring from your childhood with you into business today? Oh man, so much. I mean, I, you know, cause business for me is storytelling, right? So like, mm -hmm. um, so a lot of, uh, I, all of the storytelling I'm doing at the moment and, and I'm working on, on a couple other books right now and, and also some stuff for the screen and, and it's, um, it's all informed by my experience, uh, in childhood. One, again, going back to family, I think that, um, you know, my grandparents in particular, I'm, I'm half Ethiopian and, and, um, my Ethiopian heritage that is still very much rooted in Ethiopia. They live there, but also my black American heritage that's rooted in West Virginia and Indiana. Um, I got a lot of history from them. I got, a, you know, they informed a lot of my decision-making. Um, and I think my appreciation of, of black storytelling historically, you know, throughout the 20th century, I got from them. No, that's awesome. And, and given that, you're in Australia, you've sort of taken a step back and you're kind of on the outside of the U.S. kind of looking in and you're a political commentator. Mm. Tell us uh, a word or two that describes how you feel about the world today and tell us why. Oh, man, uh, only a word or two. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's the words that I probably share with a lot of people, concerned, anxious, yeah. um, um, uh, nervous, I. Uh, at times despair um, I mean not not a lot of positive yeah. words I think that it's it's been difficult um, you know I got to Australia February 2019 um, so I, I've been here almost exactly a year now and and um, it's been an incredibly difficult year to watch from yeah. from abroad I, sure. I so many of those moments seem like we were on the verge of collapse in in, in America yes and and um and it's also, I think, strange when I'm this far away, uh, just the, it's not, I don't get any of the good news stories from this distance. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I, we only get, we only get the doom and gloom and bad stuff. Um, so, so it's been really difficult. Uh, it's, you know, professionally, it's been an interesting time, you know, to, to kind of uh, uh, work as a political commentator when there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Um, but as an American, personally, as someone that has family there still, um, it's been really con deeply concerning. Yeah. So sticking with the, the doom and gloom, um, you know, I think you may be able to help add some optimism uh, to the mm. state. What, uh, what's been your biggest business challenge thus far and then how have you overcame it? Um, biggest business challenge was getting this thing published. I, mm. um, so I, you know, the, this book, Grey Boy started as, and I guess it's, it's perhaps helpful to add some context. Grey Boy is largely a memoir, has several interviews from my peers, and it's about, um, you know, growing up black in white spaces, uh, which was my experience and one that I shared with many people. And, um, and getting that done, you know, started as an essay for a class. Um, and... I essentially just heard from several publishers that there was just no interest, no interest in, in, in a story that was so unrepresentative of, you know, so, so like they treated it as so niche, oh like this is oh not, my, this is not oh really the, you know, like this is not really the black experience. So why would we, um, and I had, I mean, and that, that was not like a one-off thing. I mean, I had, you know, like a lot of these publishers will have kind of the keeper of the black books. Who's like yeah. one black person in the, in the, in the organization that, that is responsible for publishing the black books. And, um, and I had a couple of those, you know, very well-informed professional, you know, experienced people um, tell me that, that they didn't see a market for this book. Um, so just getting it out uh, was difficult. Um, 
there's been several follow on challenges, obviously, but I, but getting over that initial hump was, was the hardest part. You had, you asked how I got, how I, how I overcame it. It just required persistence. Frankly, it required, like, I think that, um, early on, I questioned whether or not they were right. I questioned whether or not there, whether this book should exist. Yeah. Um, but then I talked to enough people that grew up like me that felt that something like this needed to exist. Um, that I was able to turn a corner where it was no longer, where it was only a reflection of them when they would say something like that rather than a reflection of my work. Um, and when you have, I think when you have that unwavering confidence in, you know, something you've done, it, it enables you to keep pushing until, until a door opens. You know, it's really, it's really interesting because your, your book is about how you've navigated being black and white spaces. And I grew up in a just predominantly black environments, but my yeah. professional world has been almost completely white. And I right. relate to it so much just from that experience. So it's it's just, you know, I'm I'm not shocked that you heard that from the publishers, but yeah. I mean, it's so relevant, it's so relevant for so many people across industries, even if you didn't grow up in white spaces. We yeah. so many of us have worked and navigated through white spaces and have had a lot of difficulties and challenges there to that we should talk about. And, yeah. and your book brings about a lot of that. So so I, I just well, think it's you. awesome that it's you put the pen to paper and got it done. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. So, very I, so much. I wanna ask you, I wanna ask you too, you know, you you talked about your childhood and you have such a firm relationship with your mom and, and your sister. What would you say, you know, you, you talked about what skills you bring from your childhood, but just navigating business from your perspective, what would you say is sort of those those best skills that one could have or should have to help them kind of navigate? Like what, what has helped yeah. you and gotten you through? Um, so the first one again, and, and I'm going to sound like a broken record, but, but I have, uh, I, I think some people call it like their advisory board. Um, yeah. <laughs> and mine, mine is, you know, mine is comprised of people whose opinion I, I just, I respect immensely. And my mother's one of them. Yeah, you know, I, I was fortunate to, to have been born to uh, a mother who's successful in business in her own right. And, and um, so any idea that I have, you know, if it can get past her, I know that, you know, I'm at, <laughs> there's, there's, there might be something there. Um, um, but there's also several other people, a, a professor from Georgetown that I'm very close with and, and a couple other people that are in my industry that, that I respect and have been generous enough to, to offer their time and let me bend their ear when I need it. Um, so I think that that's one major one. And then two, um, I mean, this is a particular kind of, you know, project writing a book. It's not, it's not sort of entrepreneurship uh, as it's traditionally understood, but I think that um, it did require making sure I felt good about the product. I mean, like, yeah. like getting to like the, the, I needed to get good. <laughs> like, it, it, the, I don't know how else to say that. Like, I, like it was not the, you know, the initial drafts of this thing were, were really bad. Like I, if I had put it out um, at the end of that Georgetown class, uh, I'd be embarrassed today. Um, uh, so it's, it's not, and, and I, and even today I think about the final product and there's so much that I would change with what I know now, but but I think you need to you need to get to a place where you feel good about whatever you're bringing to the world, and I don't know that you can rush that. Um, yes. And and once you do come to a good product, I think that that the rest follows, hopefully. Yep. Yeah, it's absolutely true. It's awesome. so we, we're right at it just about time, but I guess I'll ask you one more question before we get all your information. Um, but as an author, right? Like, and I'm hearing what you've already said about the publishers and like your opinions. I'm sure you have experienced um, a multitude of what some would call haters. How do you, mm. how, do you, how, do you, how, do you how do you deal with haters in business and, and, and how do you keep people in the Um, I have, it's only a recent phenomenon for me to be honest. The, the, the book, I'm sure there was many people that didn't like the book, but like because, because it was kind of a personal thing, like I didn't have many people like text me saying they didn't like the book. You know, like, like you, you'd have to really be a hater to do that. Um, so, so with the book, I didn't get a lot of that. What's interesting is now, you know, I appear, I appear on, on uh, the news channels here in Australia pretty frequently now. And then also I write for one of the major papers um, uh, doing opinion pieces. 
and now, so now I, I've gotten to a level where I'll get anonymous haters on Twitter and Instagram. And that's like a whole different, <laughs> that's a whole different genre of hate than, right. you know, that I've only read about, um, um, <laughs> you know, and just DMs that are like, so, so off the wall, you know, like, so like the right wing people that, you know, are on mm-hmm. anonymous accounts and just trolling. Yeah. Um, uh, you asked how I deal with it. Frankly, like, I'm so unbothered. Like, I'm so like, I think it's so, I mean, in fact, I just, I just wrote, I was just telling a friend, like I just wrote a piece uh, for one of the major newspapers that, that ran yesterday. And, um, and I didn't get any, you know, today's a national holiday. And I don't think many people, people were tuning into the paper and I didn't get a bunch of Twitter DMs following that. And, um, and I'm like offended. It's like, it's like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like not enough people read it if I'm not getting, you know, if I'm not getting crazy right wing hate. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know that I have a method for dealing with it. I, I'm just, I'm just not particularly bothered by it. I think it's kind of funny. No, that's awesome. And, and, and I can appreciate that. And I'm, I'm thankful to hear that because it sounds like you're, you're well on your way to, just a whole nother level of success. And, and like you said, if you don't have people hating, then, you know, right. Right, you, you know, yeah. you gotta have, <laughs> yeah. you, have, you have to have some, some commentators that have something to say. So um, I, I just want to tell you, thank you so much, Cole, for being here. We appreciate you. your perspective. We want to be able to share with, with everyone where they can get your book and how they can get in touch with you or follow you or be a part of you, you socially. How might they do that? Yeah, so uh, on Instagram and Twitter, I'm Cole T.D. Brown, at Cole T.D. Brown. Um, and then the book, Gray Boy, Finding Blackness in a White World, uh, is available everywhere. Books are sold, certainly Amazon and probably your local bookstore as well. Um, mm-hmm. And they can keep up with me there. Thank you so much. This has been awesome and excellent. And we wish you just much, much grander success from here on. And, and best wishes to your, your, your time in Australia as well. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with both of you. Thank you.